Hi fans, Drew here with Smokecraft Barbecue, and today I'm going to show you how to cook competition style ribs here in the backyard. So we're going to start off with uh, some St. Louis uh, ribs. We got some really nice looking Smithfield ribs here today. And when I go out and I'm buying ribs for competition uh, or ribs in general, I want to get nice juicy ribs. Usually I'm looking for three to three and a half pound ribs that are nice and thick. On the back, you want your bones to try and be straight, as straight as you can. So if you're putting them in a box, they're beautiful. But I got two racks of really nice looking ribs today. That's some nice marbling on them. So let's go ahead, let's get them going. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna flip my ribs over. And as I cut into them, I'm gonna cut from the back. You wanna cut from the back because you don't wanna accidentally put a hole uh, into your ribs. And I'm just gonna put that knife tip in. And as you see, I'm just lifting it up. And we're just gonna cut along the side here, get this thing open. And how you do this, you wanna do this carefully, you know, as you lift this out, so you can hold all the juices in that rib, keep it into your rib bag, and you're not getting those ribs out, or that juice out onto your cutting board. But either way, they're still gonna be a little bit wet, so we take a paper towel, just gonna dap them down just a little bit, you know, wipe off your board. I'm using a disposable cutting board today. These are fantastic when we're out on competition trails or if you just don't want to worry about cleaning up later. Uh, but this is a really nice looking rack of ribs here to start off with. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start on our back side here. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the membrane. And you can see here we got a nice little overflap. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're looking at ribs, uh, you get this overflap. Sometimes you don't. It really depends on the brand and how, they, how they're trimming it. Um, Smithfields usually have this a little bit more of this overlap here, but we're going to cut it right off because we don't, we don't want that. So we're going to get rid of it. And now I'm going to go after this membrane on the back. So best way to get a membrane off, take a paper towel, get your fingers under the edge, begin to kind of pull it down. Don't worry if you don't get it all in one pull, you know, if you can, fantastic. But you get your hands on it. You can see I got my hand on the membrane. I'm literally just gonna use that paper towel, pull it all the way off, pull it all the way down. Now I didn't get all this up here, so I'm gonna go back in, get the top, pull off as much of the membrane as possible. Same thing on the bottom, just get it all the way off. Because the membrane eats tough, so, and uh, we wanna open it up, let that smoke be able to get in there, okay? So we got a nice looking back here, so we're, let's go ahead and flip it over, let's see what we got on the front. All right, so we got a nice looking front here. So on the front, this part here that's got all this gristle and fat, that's just not gonna cook down really well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide a really nice sharp knife. I use a, a Wusthof six inch uh, bony knife. And I'm gonna get underneath it carefully. And sometimes it, you know you can bend, uh, bend your bones to get that under there. And I'm gonna take some of this off. And I'm not gonna get all of it off, it's just naturally how it is. So what I'm gonna probably do here, and I usually do, is I kind of take, if I get this part off, I'm gonna cut off this last bone that's kind of floppy anyway, where we got this deep fat. And I'm just gonna feel where that is. I'm just gonna get rid of it. And competition, I'm not gonna use this last bone really anyway, but this right here is so much gristle, I'm just gonna cut right inside this bone here. So one to two bones, depending on how your, how your ribs look, take it off the end. Okay, now on the far side, see how it's kind of floppy? There's no, there's no bone there. Just go ahead, square it up. Let's get rid of it right along that cartilage. Okay, so we got nice, we're squaring it up. Now, on the top side of this particular rack, you can see we still have some bone up here, you know, from how they cut it. So we don't want that part. We want to get it right down just to the bones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it back over I'm gonna take my knife, I see where the top of my bones are, and I'm gonna go ahead, cut down, and I'm just gonna bring my knife straight across, take this part off. This is sometimes called your rib tips. So we get that, get it out of there. But now I got a nice square rack here that I can work with. You can cook this off and eat the meat if you want to, but because we're just doing competition style ribs, we don't need to do that today. So. Again, I like nice round edges. And we'll go ahead and just again, nice clean. So we got a nice clean looking rack of ribs right here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about this fat on the end because most likely with competition box, eh, it's sticking up just a little bit. If we can get it, we'll get it. 
but I'm not going to use that last bone in a box of competition, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, when I say competition style ribs, it's just how we prepare these ribs. Do it a little bit differently than you do every day at home or in the restaurant, but it's going to be exploding with lots of great flavor. So let's go ahead and let's put our first rack of ribs aside here, and let's go ahead and get the second one ready. I always had competition when I'm competing, I'm cooking four racks of ribs, but today, just for demonstration, I'm only going to cook two. Um, but at competition, I always am cooking four racks of ribs. Um, it varies by team, you know, and my personal preference, how many racks of ribs you cook at competition. Um, you know, it's really up to you and, and, and how confident you are in your ability to cook, or, or sometimes it has to do with space in your cooker. You know, sometimes you only can do, you know, three. Um, but I always recommend at least three racks of ribs. Uh, that way, you know, you got two racks of ribs to choose from. Um, or, you know, when you're trying to get your middle bones, you want to make sure at competition, we have to put at least six bones in the box. And I've always found personally that I do better when I put eight to 10 bones in the box. So we want our best uh, two out of three racks of ribs or two out of four racks of ribs that we can choose those bones from, or we can pick and choose individual bones if we have to. So this rack, this is really nice. If you get in here, look at this. This rack of ribs, you can see how much marbling it is without that much excess fat. That marbling is just gonna make this rib super, super tender. So this is a beautiful rack of ribs for competition right here. And the back, you know, our bones are relatively straight and in line. Um, so that will work out well for us. So let's do the same thing, same process. We're gonna just trim off this extra piece of uh, this extra piece of meat right there on the back of this flat. And let's go ahead and get the back, get this membrane, get our hand underneath it using that paper towel. Try and get, get underneath it there. And again, some guys are really good at this and doing a full, full one pull. I'm not as great as some, but we will get it all. So we got most of it. Let's go ahead, let's pull it back, get it off. Come back in here, grab that other piece, get it up the top, get it down the back. So it's all gone. And just a little bit more on top. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now we got some of this excess fat just sitting here. This fat's not gonna eat very well. Sometimes you get fat between the bones, and this time we didn't, but you can use a spoon if you get a lot of interior fat to kind of scoop that out. But this fat here, since it's just a little gristly and stuff, it's just sitting there, we're just gonna cut it off. You don't need to eat a giant mouthful of fat. Nobody, nobody wants that, that's not exciting, that's not good. Okay, so front, again, end here. There's no bone here, this is flabby. So we're gonna come right inside that cartilage right there, and we're just gonna cut it off. Don't need it. On this side here, again, we're gonna slide in under with that knife, try and cut some of that back without digging into my meat. And just try and get some of that silver skin, because that silver skin means you're not gonna be able to adhere your rub, and it's just not gonna eat well. So we're gonna take it back a little bit if you can. You need a really nice sharp knife to get in there to do this. And once again, I'm gonna cut off one bone here on the end, uh, just because I'm gonna square it up. And this one, once again, has that uh has the bones on top so i'm gonna again once again just come down square it up cut off that cartilage at the top doing one nice fail swoop and now i've got myself a really beautiful nice rack of ribs now this year this is sometimes you get a nice piece of fat like this that's just sticking out. That fat's not going to render too much. So I'm just going to carefully just shave just a little bit of it off. I don't want to get too crazy because I don't want to dig into my rib. But we don't want to have too much thick fat because if you bite into that one thick piece of fat and the judge gets that, they are not going to be very happy. So, so yeah, so there we go. So that's how we trim out our ribs. So we've got two racks of ribs beautifully trimmed out here. Um, so now the next step is going ahead and season them up. Um, and so I got my tray here. Let's go ahead and put them on my tray as I season. And I season my ribs starting two hours before I put them on the smoker. So I'm gonna start my ribs upside down. You can see that these ribs are just about the same size, which is perfect uh, for what we're doing today. So I season my ribs two hours before we go on the smoker. And we're gonna start on the back side. Now I'm gonna use three rubs today. I'm gonna start off with the Heath Riles Everyday Rub, 
Um, this is basically a little bit of salt, pepper, um, uh, some other basic stuff, just a hint of garlic, but I like this versus some of the other AP rubs because it doesn't have as much garlic, and I find that if you put too much garlic on ribs, it's gonna be too garlicky. Then I'm gonna do something savory. I'm gonna use uh, Sugar's Barbecue Clucking Awesome. This is a chicken rub, but it's got lots of savory flavors and it's fantastic on pork. So we're gonna go put this on as our second layer. And then as our final layer, I'm gonna use uh, Sugar's Barbecue Serious Bowl. Uh, this is actually beef rub and it's got a little bit of spice to it. And so as I'm trying to get some savory and some spice on these ribs, it's gonna be a really nice finishing touch. So let's start off with, uh, we're gonna start off with our Heath uh, Riles Everyday Rub. And we're hold it high, get your uh, nice even back and forth, and we do one rack at a time. And with this first rub, I just go one way down and then go back the other way, and that's it. We don't want to go heavy on this rub at all. Really light. This is just a nice base coat. As you can see, I'm just going nice, easy up. That's really all I want. Just a little bit of salt, pepper, a little bit of uh, garlic, some other seasonings that are in here. And that's all I'm going to do with the Heath Riles. Literally all I'm going to do. So if you don't have this at home, you can just do some salt, pepper. Um, and just do once over with salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna do about a medium layer of this clucking awesome because it is awesome. And same thing, I'm just gonna go up and down. Yeah, I'm gonna do more medium layer here. But remember, we're putting three layers of rub, so we don't wanna get too crazy. You don't wanna cover it so you can't see the meat anymore. So I'll go up and down just once, make sure I got nice, even coverage on the bottom. You know, again, holding it up high. I like, I like these containers from Sugars because they got uh, the perfect holes to just be able to shake up and down. You don't have to put it in a shaker or container. All right, so the up and down. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do my last layer of rub. Again, the serious bowl from Sugar's Barbecue. Again, this is going to have a little more spice, a little more heat. Um, and this, so we got we got our savoriness first. And now we're going to go ahead. And you can see as I put this on, now is when I should stop kind of seeing the meat. I'm using this to go ahead and get across the top. And... We're going to stop seeing that meat because we're going to have all this good stuff in here. So again, this is like a medium layer rub, you know, as you go up and down. Now, remember, competition barbecue is all about getting that explosive flavor. So I am going to season these heavier than I might season them if I was just seasoning, rub, seasoning ribs at home, uh, just for everyday cooking. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do now, we're two hours before we wanna put them on the smoker. I'm gonna let this sit just like this for 30 minutes. And 30 minutes, that's gonna give the back time to start absorbing all of our rubs. Then we're gonna flip it and we'll do the top side. So we'll be back in about 30 minutes to do the other side here. All right guys, it's been 30 minutes on our ribs. So you can see that the, the rub is beginning to sit right into our meat. Um, so it's time to go ahead and flip these over. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to take them off this tray they're on, and I'm going to flip them over. You can see it's not really dripping any rub because that rub is beginning to absorb in. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to put them on top of this rack. And the reason I'm going to put them on top of this rack, I'm going to lift this rack up, and I'm going to put this rack right back on top here. Um, but I'm actually going to keep it on this rack all the way through the cooking process at this point. So let's go ahead and clean hand clean, dirty hand dirty. And you'll note that I didn't put any mustard down on these ribs. And the reason I didn't put mustard down on these ribs, um, usually I would if I was cooking them in the backyard just using a single rub, but I got so much flavor going on with these rubs here, they're gonna really absorb in. So I don't really need that mustard to hold on to it. So again, we're gonna start off with Heath Riles every day, the salt pepper mix, and we're just gonna do a light once over coat. And again, once over on this side too. So once each way, and that's it. No, maybe just a little bit more there. All right, and now I'm going to use, again, my Clucking Awesome from Sugar's Barbecue. This is my savory rub. And go ahead and get that in there. Again, good medium coat of it. Begin to get the savoriness. And what's really great about these rubs is the color they're going to bring out of these ribs. These ribs are just, they're going to be popping with color here. So, Sugar's. So beautiful. Okay, all right, so that's with a little, little bit down there. That's plucking awesome. And again, third rub I'm gonna use on these ribs, sugars, barbecue, serious bowl. Again, just got a little bit of heat, you know, so we're gonna get some nice little sweet heat. 
And again, as we go here, you know, now is really where we're gonna stop seeing that meat because we're gonna have all this rub all the way over it. So it's that last layer uh, that really is gonna bring it all together. All right, so up and down. Get all of it, make sure you get those corners. Now I'm not too worried about lifting it up and getting these edges because um, when I cook and at the end, I'm gonna sauce my edges and the judge is not gonna eat from the end of the bone. Um, they're gonna eat right in the middle of this rib. So yeah, so again, they're seasoned pretty heavily here. And that's it. So we're gonna go ahead, we're now gonna, we already had them uh, upside down for a half hour. So now we're gonna leave them an hour and a half with this. And again, we wanna be bringing our, our ribs to room temperature. So today, like today, it's, it's uh, you know, it's only like 70 degrees out today. So it's a perfect day. We can just leave them outside. You can put them inside. Um, if you're in a trailer, leave them on your trailer, kitchen counter, but we are bringing them slowly up to room temp. So when they hit the smoke, um, they're gonna be, this to be nice and sweaty. So you don't wanna do this the night before, really much more before two hours, because the salts that are in your rubs can start to get uh, too deep into your ribs and begin to get hammy. And you don't wanna get your ribs tasting too hammy. So we just do it a couple hours ahead. And uh, so we'll see you in an hour and a half, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put them in the smoker. All right, guys. So it's been about an hour and a half since we seasoned the top of our ribs. Uh, you can see that they've sweat, they've sweated nicely, and they have some really great deep red color here. So these things are now ready to go ahead and get in the smoker. So what I'm going to do, because I'm cooking competition style ribs, is I'm actually going to cook them on top of this rack. You don't have to do this step, but sometimes your racks can be a little bit dirty, or sometimes your racks can get a little bit hot, and you can sear the bottom of your ribs. So by leaving them on top of this rack. We don't have to worry about that. And it also gives us the ability to rotate them in the smoker halfway through the cook. So what I am gonna do before I put them in though, is I am gonna go ahead and push them together just a little bit, and make sure they're nice and tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and put them in our 270 smoker. So we use a 270 uh, KC model. This is what we use for competition. We preheated this right now, it's sitting about 325. So it's about 50 degrees higher than we wanna be cooking our ribs, so about 275. That way when the ribs that are nice and cold go in, uh, it's going to settle in nicely and then we're going to be able to just let it sit here. So let's go ahead and get our ribs in. So I'm going to move this on top for just a moment. All right, come on over. Let's take a look. All right. So normally I'd have lots of different meat in here, but we're just cooking ribs today. So I'm going to put them right in the middle. And again, I'm going to cook it right on this rack. So I'm going to take my rack and I'm just going to place it right on the middle of my shelf. And again, just keeps it off of the, the grates in here, keep them nice and clean. Well, we'll go ahead and put them in like that, just like that. Notice how I had a water pan in the bottom. Um, in this particular smoker, uh, and really anytime I'm cooking a competition, I like to have a water pan in because it's gonna keep a little bit moisture, more moisture inside my cooker as I'm cooking ribs especially. Now, one other thing I'm gonna do here as we get ready is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out some squeezed butter. Uh, you can use parquet, uh, but I like to use the Land Lake soft butter. It's a little creamier and not quite as liquidy. So we're gonna go ahead, this has been in the ice box, so it's nice and cold. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sit that right on top of my smoker right there, just like that. That way in about an hour's time when I need it, it's gonna be soft and ready to uh, work with. So we're gonna let the smoker set in here at about 275 degrees. I'm gonna put some cherry wood in. Um, I usually put in a couple chunks of cherry and one chunk of pecan when I'm competing. Uh, but I really like the color uh, and the flavor that cherry wood puts on a rib. So we're gonna toss those in the back of the firebox here. And then I'm gonna leave this alone at 275 for about an hour, and then we'll check on them then. All right, guys, Drew here, and it's been about an hour since we put in our competition ribs into our 270 smoker. We've been holding perfectly right where we wanted to, about 275 to 290 degrees uh, this whole time. We haven't looked at it at all. So now an hour in, we're gonna take our next step and we're gonna spritz our ribs. To spritz our ribs, you can do a couple different things. Some teams use uh, uh, liquid butter or uh, squeeze butter, like a parquet, or the uh, butter I showed you earlier that we were uh, holding on for just a little bit later. But I personally like to use spray butter. Can't believe it's not butter spray. This stuff is fantastic. Um, and we're gonna use this because I like it because it covers our ribs just a little bit better than just putting uh, the butter on back and forth. So the whole purpose of this is to keep the top of our ribs moist through the cooking process and to make sure that when we cut them, the, the ribs don't just kind of like flake apart. So we're gonna wait an hour to let the smoke get on them and sit on it, and then we're gonna go and uh, spray them down. So come on over, let's go ahead, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look. 
first time looking. Oh yeah, look at those ribs after an hour. So they're looking absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go spritz them. You know, this is gonna keep them nice and moist. And you can see how I'm getting nice, really good coverage by using a uh, by using a spray versus using a, um, if I just put some parquet on top, which would just melt and kind of come right off of them. This way, at least we get some nice good coverage all the way over them. And your finger better be strong when you're gonna do this. Just, you can put this into a sprayer. Um, and I've done that before, I just didn't do it today. But you can put it into a sprayer so you can go a little bit faster. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get all the way around. We get some great colors. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave these in here. Let's go ahead and close this back up. Leave this for about 45 more minutes. And we'll check them in about 45 minutes. Uh, and we're gonna be looking for the color on our ribs. Uh, we're not adding any more wood in there throughout the rest of the process. So we're gonna take a look at our color in about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour and then we'll at that point we'll go ahead and wrap up so we'll see you in just a little bit all right guys it's been about another 45 minutes with our competition ribs in the smoker over cherry wood it's definitely now time to wrap we've got great color on them so we're going to go ahead and prep ourselves to wrap here so first thing we're going to do we're going to take some foil we're going to take some aluminum foil heavy duty aluminum foil and i'm going to double wrap these ribs so i'm going to pull out two for each uh, set of ribs. Just get it, get it taken care of before I even get the ribs out of the smoker. All right, I want to keep the shiny side up, so we put the ribs on the inside, and then your dull side is going to be on the outside of your thing. And that's just how it pulls out of your foil container anyway, usually, so you're in pretty good shape to start. Then I got all my ingredients here that we're going to need to wrap. First off, we've got uh, the squeeze butter, okay, uh, the Land O'Lakes uh, butter, soft butter spread. Now remember, I put this earlier on top of the smoker to begin to soften it. It got a little too soft, so I put it back in some ice, so it's now the perfect consistency. Then I've got something called Mike's Hot Honey. Uh, this has got some sweet heat to it, which is fantastic. We got some brown sugar, but we're going to use a granulated brown sugar because it helps us control things better. Again, we're going to put just a hint more of our uh, Serious Bull Dry Rub, which is our spicy dry rub on. And then we're going to spritz the whole thing down with just a little bit of apple juice I got in a spray as bottle. So let's go ahead and pull out these ribs. We'll do them one at a time and show you how we do it. Oh my goodness, these ribs have just amazing color. So again, I can just grab that rack since I had them on the rack. All right, so you can see these ribs here and how beautiful they look. They've got all the color we want. We definitely don't want any more color than that. And don't worry about them being a little dark because they are gonna bounce back here in uh, as we cook them. Okay, so I'm gonna put my ribs here. I'm gonna put them top side up first. All right, and I'm gonna bring it towards me a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do, you see the bones beginning to come out just a little bit. I'm gonna put my finger between those bones and just pull back on the meat. When you pull back on the meat, we're just breaking that membrane and making sure we get some nice pullback as this continues to cook. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab my, my squeeze butter. I'm just gonna go up and down, over. That's it, okay? Because we're gonna do this top and bottom and we're gonna be putting a lot of liquid in here. Next thing, Mike's Hot Honey. This is for sweet heat. All right, so we're gonna just drizzle some hot honey across the top. Same thing, just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my granulated sugar. Again, this is just regular brown sugar, but because it's granulated, I can control how much I'm putting on a lot better than if it was just uh, the regular soft sugar out of the packet. So I really like this granulated sugar for competition cooking. Now I'm just gonna put just a really light dusting of our rub on top. Just that's it. And just for good measure, I'm going to spray it all with just a little bit of apple juice for some moisture and a little more sweetness. Now, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Man, it's got some such great color on it. So we're going to zigzag back and forth with a little liquid butter. Our Mike's Hot Honey. Some brownulated sugar. Hit it with just a touch of our rub. And again, just spray it right on top. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, so I'm gonna take our first piece foil. 
I'm gonna fold it in half. Fold it over the top. And you wanna hold, fold these really nice and tight, okay? And place it in the center and then do it once again. We wanna keep all this moisture in. Notice how I left it bone or uh, bone side up. And I'm doing it, I'm folding it so it's nice and tight so it doesn't steam too much as it cooks. Okay, so I'm putting it right back on that rack that it came off of. And I'm gonna go ahead and do rack number two. Same thing, I'm just gonna kinda of pull between those bones just a little bit. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the bottom. But put your finger in between them. You see what I'm doing, just pulling it back. Pushing my finger in between, it's gonna help that bone bend. All right, so here we go. A little, a little bit of liquid butter or uh, squeeze butter. Some Mike's Hot Honey. Again, that sweet heat. A little bit brownulated or granulated brown sugar. Just a hint of our rub, just to get just a little more flavor there at the end. And then spritz it with a little bit of apple juice. Again, flip over, repeat. Mike's Hot Honey. Granulated sugar. Just a hint of rub. And spritzing. Now, same thing as before. Go ahead, wrap it tight. Carefully, you don't break your foil, but this is why we double foil it. Get it in there, hold it down tight and wrap it over so you don't have too much loose air in there so it doesn't steam too much. All right. So again, these are gonna go right back on my rack. I got them back on my rack. And it's really important now at this point in my mind, even if you didn't put it on a rack earlier, to put it on a rack now, because we got so much sugar, honey, uh, brown sugar, if you put it on a rack, it just makes sure it doesn't burn onto your ribs when you put it back in the smoker. So we're gonna put it back in the smoker for about an hour, and then we're gonna check on it. We're going for an internal temperature of our ribs, about 207 degrees. So we'll check them in an hour and just poke through and make sure that that meat feels like butter. So back in we go into the smoker. Lock it back up. We'll see you in an hour. All right, guys, it's been about an hour in the smoke since we wrapped uh, our competition style ribs. So now we're gonna go ahead and check them. Um, I start checking them in at about an hour. Um, usually take between an hour and hour and 15 minutes wrapped and we've been holding our temperature right here just under 300 degrees in our 270 smoker. So let's go ahead, let's pull them out. Oh, so good. pull them out right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check each one of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open them up. I like to open them up and check. Um, it gives me, that way I don't worry about pushing foil through. And I'm going to use a, my thermo pen, not only just check the temperature, but also check the overall uh, feel of the ribs. I want my pen to go in just like butter. If they're not done, we'll go ahead and we'll put them right back in. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and open them up. Come take a look how good these look. Oh, look at that, great pullback, great color. Let's go ahead and put our pen in. All right, see how we're about 207 degrees? They're just, it's just beginning to go in right there. These are done. So we're gonna check their second rack here. We're gonna go ahead and keep them wrapped up and we're gonna let these ribs rest for about an hour. Uh, before we actually cut into them and before we sauce them, but we'll go ahead and close them up for right now and then put them put them uh, Into a hot box to hold but let's check this other rack here We want to make sure both racks are done just because one's done doesn't mean that the other one is necessarily done So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, those have some great pullback also. Let's take a look. Oh Yes, those are definitely 
Uh, they're perfectly tender, right between the ribs. See how just going in just like butter, you know, dropping in on its own with its own weight falling right in. That's a perfect indication that these things are done. So we're gonna go ahead. If they get a little bit too done, instead of folding them back up like this, like I am, because I'm gonna put them to rest, you can leave them open for a minute and just let them cool. We're just letting them rest uh, before we put it back in. I try to rest um, for at least 30 minutes at competition, if not an hour, depending on how tight I am on time, just to let the juices reabsorb. And we're gonna go ahead, as we rest these, we're gonna put them into our Cambro, and then we're gonna come back to them in probably about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, since we're doing this at home today and we're not under a timeline, we're probably gonna leave it closer to an hour, and then we're gonna uh, paint them with uh, some sauce, put them back in the smoker, and then finish up and eat them. So we'll see you again probably in about 45 minutes. All right, guys, so our ribs have been resting for just about an hour, so it's time to go ahead and get them uh, sauced up and glazed and ready to get to the judges. So uh, when I'm at competition, normally I'm gonna have my sauce nice and hot, uh, just holding it ahead of time. Uh, but we're gonna make some quick sauce here today. Today for our sauce, for our glaze, we're gonna use Sugar's Barbecue Rodeo Candy um, as our base sauce. And we're gonna thin it out with just a little bit of apple juice. So we're gonna go ahead and what I'm gonna do, I'm not actually gonna need that much sauce uh, for this. So I'm gonna take uh, one cup of Sugar's Barbecue Sauce and I just turned on my pot below. I'm gonna take one cup of sugar sauce. That's it. Ooh. See, that pan gets hot, and we don't want to burn sauce. Really important, you don't want to burn sauce, so that's why I pulled it off immediately. We're just trying to warm it up. So, sugar sauce here, and then I'm going to take uh, a quarter cup, just to thin it out, of apple juice. I'm trying to heat way down, because again, I'm not, you don't want to boil your sauce because you're going to burn the sugars. So again, I'm just thinning it out with that apple juice. That's all we're doing, um, and it adds a nice little sweetness to it. So we're gonna go ahead, just stir this up, mix that together. You can see it's already beginning to steam. Really important, we don't burn it, but we know because we're putting it on this and we don't have that much in there, that this is gonna be nice, warm, and perfectly thin to put onto our ribs here. So, all right, you just, we're gonna let it sit for just half a second here. And when those edges begin to bubble, we know that we're gonna be all set. Okay, so while that does that, we're gonna go ahead and get our ribs out. Let's go ahead and get this out of our way. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull our ribs out of the wrap and I'm gonna put them uh, flat here. It's the first time we've seen our ribs, obviously. Oh, see, we're just beginning to bubble. So we're good to go. I'm gonna turn the heat off and just move this whole thing to the side. All right, great. All right, so this is the first time we've seen our ribs. Uh, since we cooked them and since we wrapped them up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, because we're gonna handle them hot, I'm gonna take some white gloves. And again, if I haven't told you this trick in this video, this is a really great pit master trick. You just get some white cotton gloves, put them underneath neath your, uh, your nitro or latex gloves. Um, and that way you can handle hot food without any issues. So let's go ahead, let's open up these ribs. Let's take a look. All right, oh, these just look awesome. So, this first time we've seen them, all right, so we're gonna take them out and we're gonna leave them right now, just face side down. And we're gonna save this juice that's in here. So we're just gonna hold this to the side for just a minute and I'll show you why at the end. So here's rack number two. Beautiful. So we'll save that juice, just hold it tight for just a moment, put it to the side. So I'm gonna take my sauce, which is now nice and hot, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glaze the back of these ribs first. Okay, I just put some nice sauce on them. And this sauce being a nice light sauce, you know, we're not gonna go heavy, just get a little bit of flavor back of these ribs. Now I'm going to do the same on the front. All right, just saucing them. You can see I'm not really going heavy, just a little bit of nice little glaze. All right. So now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm just going to 
I'm saving this juices that are inside these foil things. So I'm just gonna move them to the side for just a moment. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this pan here, and as I flip it over, I'm gonna put the ribs back on that wire rack. Again, because I don't want the sugar from the ribs to uh, caramelize too much. So I'm gonna put my ribs, oh man, those ribs look good. I'll flip them over. Oh man, these ribs look fantastic. So, you can see the redness in these ribs and how beautiful they are. So, we're gonna go ahead and paint them with our sauce. And again, you just, you don't wanna get too heavy with your sauce. And we're just gonna, because what we're gonna do is once we paint these, we're gonna put them back into our smoker just to let the sauce set for about 10 minutes. absolutely gorgeous i mean the color on these is fantastic i know it's getting a little dark outside but i hope you can see how red in that deep red mahogany uh color that's really what we're searching for and we able you know this rub combination is really able to put that on there and we're able to hold it so all right so we got our edges all looking good we don't have any flex uh you know spots sometimes you're going to get spots in your uh on top of your ribs from stuff dripping down on your smoker you want to pull those off before you put them in but these look great so let's go ahead and put them right back in our smoker. And our smoker has been holding steady at about 300 degrees. So we're gonna put them back in with nothing in above them. So nothing, there's no problem of anything dripping. Oh, those are gorgeous. And we're just gonna put those, you can see the color, how great those look right there. And we're gonna put those back in for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and take them out and we'll slice them and go ahead and get them onto the judges. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and take our ribs out of the smoker now. The sauce should be nice and set. Oh, these things are beautiful. Oh man, oh man. Oh, the color is just great. So, okay, so what we're gonna do, when we do competition ribs, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce, uh, the same sauce onto my board. The reason I'm putting sauce on my board is because I'm gonna just be sliding these ribs all over the place and I wanna make sure I don't mess up any of that uh, sauce now that it's all set. So we're gonna put sauce there. And you can also see that this board, this is a disposable cutting board. It has a perfect KCBS nine by nine shape. So I know exactly what I can fit into a box. So I'm gonna transfer my ribs. And I'm gonna transfer them over to me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move them around. You can see I'm already gonna move them around. I am gonna take this beautiful Wusthof, uh scalloped slicing knife. Uh, this thing is fantastic for cutting ribs. And when I'm looking for ribs for competition, I'm looking in the middle of my racks. I wanna get four to five bones out of each one of these racks of ribs for a perfect turn-in. So um, I know that some of the bones towards the end are not gonna work out well for a turn-in. So that's how I'm gonna test out how we cooked our ribs today. So when I cut my ribs, I'm gonna kind of reach my fingers around to touch the bone on the back side of every rib. And that way, when I know where that bone is, I can slice my knife right in between the bones without worrying about it. So I'm gonna start off here on the end because I know we cannot use these end pieces. So we're gonna just slice right through and Let's take a look at this first rib. You can see how juicy it is, how much moisture is coming out of it. So let's go ahead, let's take a bite. Let's see what our flavor looks like. Oh, that's perfect. So you see how it's a perfect bite, how I bit right to the bone, but still holding to the bone and not just falling off. That means that these are cooked perfectly. I can tell you what, I wish you could taste them because they taste fantastic. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side because I know right now that this rack of ribs is good to go. So now I'm gonna take my other rack of ribs. Same thing, I wanna be looking down the middle and I know over here, I can see where this bone is and we'll cut in the exact same spot because I can't use this section to turn in. I can't turn in the end. Oh man, look at the juice coming out of this one. See how juicy it is? Let's take a bite, let's take a look. Again, just perfectly cooked, coming through, right to the bone, not coming off. Oh man. That's excellent. Okay, so now that we know that we have good ribs 
and we got two perfect racks of ribs, I'm gonna go ahead and slice them up. Again, I'm looking to get five perfect bones in an ideal world out of each, so I can put 10 into my box. So just looking at these ribs from a presentation perspective, this rack of ribs has is, has the pieces of, uh, or has the bones sticking out, where this one, the bones didn't come out quite as much. So that says to me, this is gonna be my top rack, my presentation rack, and this will be my bottom rack. So let's go ahead, we're gonna slice through them, uh, and we slice every single rib as we go. And we wanna make sure that you get between those bones. Some people have different tricks to do this. I've seen teams put toothpicks. I've seen people use injection needles uh, to try and make sure that they don't hit. But you wanna try and get through right between the bones. Oh, what a perfect cut. And one of the things that's really nice about this knife is I felt there I hit just an edge of that bone, but it went right through, so we're okay. Okay, so this end here, I can see that this is not gonna be a good bone to turn in. So I have my best five bones probably right here in the middle. This bone here is kind of sticking out a little bit. So those are gonna be my five bones off of this rack of ribs. So we're gonna move those to the side for just a moment. All right, I'm gonna take my second rack here and this is my presentation rack. So I gotta be really careful um, as I go through it. And I'm actually gonna wipe my blade off as we get ready to go here for our second rack of ribs. All right, so here we go. Again, just trying to follow your bones. Oh, I caught my bone there, but I'm not gonna stop because I was able to go straight through it. Same thing there, so we gotta adjust just slightly. Perfect. Sometimes teams can use electric knives to help them with this, but if you got a really sharp blade, you can cut perfectly without doing that. Okay, great. So I know I have my presentation bones. I know which ones those are. Now, you're probably wondering, what was I doing before when I held on to the sauce, the butter sauce here. Now that we're getting ready to present these ribs, I know here that my best five bones, let's see, one, two, three, four. We're gonna, again, we're gonna use our middle five bones right here in the middle. So we're gonna pull those to the side. So these are my five presentation bones. So now that I've cut them, I have all this really amazing juice and flavor from when I cooked these earlier. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run, take a look at every single bone, and I'm gonna run my, uh, this leftover jus right across it. You can see I got a little bit of bone here, but again, I'm not gonna fret about it too much. Nothing I can do about it. You know, you just gotta try and cut them the best you can. The judge is gonna eat around it. So, but what we're doing when we're painting these ribs it's by painting them is this is going to hold in our moisture uh, into the ribs as they're waiting to go to the judges. So we're going to just paint them on the side. And this also just puts a little more flavor in on those edges. So we're going to just paint them like that. I know that this is my presentation rack. This is my bottom rack. So let's do the same thing. We're just going to paint the sides, paint the sides. Get all of that flavor on there, hold that juice in as best we can. Paint the sides. All right. And we're just being careful also not to mess up any of our, uh, any of our uh, sauce work on top because we don't want sauce work to look gloppy. That's something you can get knocked down for. So painting the sides, painting the sides. All right, perfect. All right, so today, because we're at home and we're not working with a KCBS box, I'm gonna go ahead and just present them on a really nice platter. Um, normally you're going into a nine by nine box, but now I'm gonna go ahead and take those gloves off because I got all kinds of sauce all over them. I'm gonna change my gloves because I'm moving into my box. 
And if you check out, if you look at our YouTube channel, we show you how to make a perfect box um, really easily. And then you can take a look at that and figure out how to get your ribs in. But again, we know, let's just say that this is my box right here. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna put presentation ribs. I'm gonna go ahead and take these first five ribs here. And I'm gonna put them together nice and tight. We want them to hold together, okay? And I'm gonna use a spatula just like this to put them into my box. And, you know, sometimes we see here, you know, our ribs, they are turning just a little bit, but I want them to look flat in the box. So I'm gonna, since these are my bottom ribs, I'm gonna put them right here. And I'm not too worried about cleaning them up because you're not gonna see those bones here in just a second, but I want my top to look straight and flat. And now I'm gonna take my presentation ribs and I want these to be on the top and I want the bones facing up. Now, sometimes if you really wanted to, you could cut the ends off the bottom of the ribs here on the very end and straighten this line. I don't necessarily see the need to do that, but I know people who do it and hey, nothing wrong with it. If it's gonna get you that extra presentation point and it's really crooked or sometimes if you've had to take bones from different racks, you may need to do that to get to fit. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay these bones literally right on top, just like that. Uh -oh. And now you can see with my gloves and my hands that I got a little bit messy. So we're gonna take some paper towel. And wipe off our board, just like we'd wipe off our box. But right there, those are, that would be my turn in right there, folks. Again, could have done a little couple, I mean, again, looking at these ribs, maybe I should have caught them in a little bit of angle, but I say what, you know, we're backyard right now. They're looking pretty darn fantastic to me. You know, keep them, keep them pressed tight. And ladies and gentlemen, I give you competition ribs. <laughs>